perhaps a little bit of self-advertisement, you know. Everybody else in the room in white time tails and just one man in a kilt. After all, if you can't advertise yourself, what hope have you of being able to advertise anything else? Uh, you, you've been responsible for some legendary ad campaigns. Do you want to start listing off a few of them for folks? Oh, there have been so many. I did good advertising for Rolls-Royce many years ago and for Hathaway Shirts, you know, the man with the patch on his eye. That was your idea to have a guy yeah. like that? Yeah, he, he was Mike Tarn. And uh, what else? Hathaway Shirts, uh, Schweppes, yeah. Commander Whitehead. you remember him selling Schweppes for 20 years, 30 years? And Dove Toilet Soap, you know that? Yeah. Well, I've done hundreds of them. I've probably done as much advertising as any living man. Well, at the time, what was going through your mind to think that a, a, a man with a, a missing an eye would be a good way to sell well, dress I'd, shirts? <laughs> I'd seen some research which showed that if you can inject into the ad an element of story appeal, you do well. People read the ad. They look at that. They say, who is this man in the night patch? That takes about a tenth of a second. Yeah. And they want their curiosity to speak. So then they go under the picture and read the copy, and that's how you sell the shirts. So building in a little fantasy with the product. Exactly so. It's easier said than done. Yeah. I didn't write that headline. It's a quotation from an article which had appeared about 20 years before in an English automobile magazine. Good ad. All facts, no adjectives, all specific. Sold a lot of cars. A year later, the restless 21-year-old returned to Britain, forsaking Parisian elegance for a sales job in Scotland, hawking door-to-door -door a new product called the Arga Cooker. Another component of his creative philosophy came very much from his experience selling Arga Cookers, uh, where he said, you know, no sale, no commission, no commission, no eat. <laughs> Here's a model of an Arga. It's the most expensive cooking stove in the world, and by far the best. It used to take me half an hour to make the sale. It's about 3,000 words. It was a lesson of humility, because you have to knock at the door of someone, and then you have to praise the product you're selling. And then he knew how to cook, so he showed what one could do with it. Ogilvy was a natural salesman so successful that Arga asked him to write the sales manual. Fortune magazine said it is the best of its kind ever written. The longer you talk to a prospect, the better, and you will not do this if you are a bore. Pepper your talk with anecdotes and jokes. A deadly serious demonstration is bound to fail. If you cannot make a lady laugh, you certainly cannot make her buy. The consumer's not a moron, she's your wife. In 1938, he began work at George Gallup's grandly named Audience Research Institute. Gallup turned polling into a science and was the first to apply its techniques to the world of advertising. Pounding the streets for Gallup made a lasting impression. He went door to door and he asked people their opinions and he asked them why they thought what they thought. And I think that too stayed with him because he never for a minute um, stopped thinking about what does the consumer think. 